very much. Uh, as we heard, you have to most stay of very us. Close okay. To okay. Thank you. Yeah. As we are in the last debate, uh, the question of identities is a very hot topic, and I, I believe it's because um, it goes very deep in, in yourself. Who am I? And uh, it has. Uh, it, it, it can be a very philosophical question, but it has very concrete consequences. Who am I? Who, what do I fight for? Who are my friends? What do I do? What are my political views? So I'm, I'm very happy to, to be here to discuss today. And uh, maybe the first question to, to Nina. What does it mean to you, identity? What is your identity? If we start with, with you, yourself. Well, we were talking a few minutes ago when I was flying to Helsinki, I was thinking about my identity. So I'm a child of immigrants. Practically my father is an immigrant who immigrated from Croatia to Slovenia. So who am I? Am I Slovene? Am I Croatian? I am European. But if you are looking on my roots, I am also Slovene and also Croatian. And geographically, I am in Europe, so I am European. And that's my national identity. Okay, we'll try to dig a little bit deeper into that. But first, Mario, your point of view, how do you see yourself? What is your identity? I think my identity is first of all a human and it would be nice to have a seminar about uh, like identity of human race but I don't think we are I don't think we are ready yet because it's it seems to be quite this Europe thinking about Europe and identity European identity seems to be uh, even maybe bigger bigger than and we can uh, understand I was listening to this conversation before us and these kind of thoughts came to my mind but of course I, I think I'm um, first of all I'm human and and then I'm European and then I'm Finnish I have very many identities of course yeah Leif uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to have uh, a classical education and uh, with Latin and all that. So uh, I am Greek, a bit of Greek. So uh, when I was very really young, I, I was taught uh, something about Socrates, and uh, he had this uh, idea of ignore thyself, know thyself. Well, I'm turning 62 in January, and I really don't know myself. Uh, and the same goes, I think, for collective identities. Uh, it's very hard to pinpoint uh, anything about identities concerning whole nations, regions, or even uh, individual human beings. It's a question that always uh, goes unfulfilled in some words. Now, the Latin word identitas means something that is true to itself or something that, uh, in, that in essence is true to itself or something that is absolutely similar to something else. In, uh, uh, in this light, it's very hard to uh, discuss the question of identity in any meaningful sense except on a psychological level. So to, so to uh, stretch out this discussion to concern whole regions of nations, localities and so on, I think it's a, it's a futile uh, uh, exercise, you know. But 
have to ask you immediately like, before we go, go to, to, to the question of European identity. But don't you think that uh, a European identity, for instance, is, is much more than a ge geographical question? Of course, yes, of course. But uh, uh, if, if, if you use the word identity in this uh, uh, connection, then, then you have to find something that is essential to Europe. What would it be? I mean, it's geography, it's uh, values, it's culture, it's history, but uh, the whole uh, sum of European history is so diverse, a huge web of interaction between peoples, that it's very hard to find any essence, in it, any, any, any basic idea that, so to say, has developed during a couple of millennia, or if you prefer to to have Europe start at uh, Charles the Great in the ninth century or, or something like that. Uh, Europe is a, a category too diverse to be pinpointed in this way. Very good, Lev. That's a good challenge. Let's start to try to find something that is the essence of a European identity, or let's reject it at the end of this discussion. Uh, me, myself, I was thinking about identities uh, just in a superficial way. I'm a Finn, I'm a Swedish-speaking Finn, I'm a man, I'm a human, I'm a rock guitar player, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm a journalist, and so on, and so on. It's like peeling an onion and uh, leaving the, the leaves that you peel on the table and still you don't know which part is more important. So I, I, I totally agree that it, it's a difficult task to try to find uh, identity. But still, if we, don't, if we don't have anything, I mean, how can, how can we, how can we survive, survive as a political construction? How can we how can we argue against the United States? How can we argue against China? Should Europe just resign and, and, and to, to, to be different cultures that don't have a, uh, uh, the same language? Uh, these are questions I hope to, to, that you are, will try to explore together now with us. Nina, why don't you start? What, what, what does European uh, identity mean to you? Well, <laughs> let's say the Europe without borders, common uh, economy, uh, values, money. I think that the European identity is everything what the European Union fights for. I think that this is our identity. Um, I would say two, two words more that um, because of this diversity, the dialogue is something that is very European to me. And uh, then, uh, I think it's, you know, yeah, that and equality and this kind of human rights and this kind of thing. Me, me as, as a woman, I feel very uh, privileged to live in Europe and uh, then I feel a big responsibility also to continue these values, these good values about education and and equality and dialogue we have built or they have built before us. We don't have to be humble or even thankful about what we have, but we have the thing is that we have to make them continue. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, you can look at, uh, at the question from many points of view, but uh, uh, if we talk about the political construct, construct of, of Europe right now, the European Union, and all the other countries that aren't members of the European Union. 
I mean, we have to, we, we always have to remember that when we speak about, we talk about the, the European Union, we aren't talking about Europe. We're talking about the EU. And uh, that's a point that, that we, we can't miss. Okay, let's take the political construction. Are we in some ways uh, expressing our European identity when we, for example, praise or criticize the European Union? I mean, uh, there's a difference there that we should be aware of. Um, then again, if we talk about values, um, European values, uh, which are they? What, what, what kind of values are we talking about? Are we talking about the present values expressed in uh, different uh, resolutions and texts and uh, programs and projects uh, um, uh, that uh, have been born inside the European Union? Democracy, cooperation, economic integration, uh, are these the values that we're talking about, or are we talking about the old European values? Christianity, fascism, which is a European value, alive and well today. Are we talking about Christianity and religious fundamentalism, also a European idea, alive and well today? So. Which values are we talking about? Are we talking about communism? A very European value, born in the great century of the 1900s, during uh, an era when Europe really dominated the world. So, uh, always remember when you talk about European values, which values you're talking about. So, uh, do you mean that we actually can't talk about a European identity. Are you already ready to... to no, 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 no. We, 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 we can and we must talk about it. But we have to remember what we're talking about. We're, all also, we're not talking only about democratic, humanitarian values. We're talking about totalitarian values and of fascist values just as genuinely European as the good ones we are promoting today. I agree in that sense, of course, that we should know our history. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about history. Uh, excuse me. I'm not talking about history. In uh, the so-called revolution that's taking place in Kiev right now, fascist parties play a very prominent role. You might not know it, but I happen to know it because I read The Guardian this morning. <laughs> but is this a European value that we have a, a living discussion about uh, and between different political parties, ideologies, ideo ideologies, uh, religious and so on uh, can can you can you see any what is the common thing about these uh, for instance polit political movements in europe right now is there anything common there isn't a common thing of course i mean uh, politics in europe are as diverse as they are all over the world we've got all kinds of political movements in Europe. Not only good ones, very many bad ones. We just have to accept it and then fight for uh, the good cause that uh, we choose to fight for. Often identity is built by defining us and others. Uh, Nina, for instance, how do you see it? Is, is there your identity and the European identity is, is there a, a moment of defining the others? It's hard to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, 
one of the questions uh, that I have uh, been posing when yeah. I have been doing a, a documentary for TV about Europe is, is uh, the question of identity. And I often get the, get the answer, well, at least we are not American, mm -hmm. uh, we are not Asian, they start like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, if you know the history of Slovenia, let's talk about Slovenia. We were, yes, we are now independent for 22 years, but historically, we were a part of Austrian, Hungarian, and then of, how do you say, the Commonwealth of Slovenian, Croatians, and Serbians. We were in the Socialistic Federal Union of Yugoslavia. But you've also been a member of, or part of the Ottoman Empire. Yes, of course, <laughs> of course. I forget about that. So, if you ask the Slovenes, we do not, we cannot, or we are not able to live as independent. So, we have to go somewhere, and the European Union is the fact that we have to go there. So, if you ask the Slovenes, our identity is, let's say, Europe, European Union, and their values. Because I think that, okay, this is very critical, but if you talk to Slovenes, we don't have our own identity, because we are so mixed, and historically we are not, you don't, we, if you look in the Slovenia, we are two millions of people, so one million, they are Slovenes, autochthonically auto Slovenes. But the million of citizens, they are immigrants from former Yugoslavia. So, we try to have, let's say, the national question about identity and everything else. And the main goal was that we don't have nationality. We just know the Slovenian citizenship. But does it matter? For someone, it matters. For someone. Because we were talking before. <laughs> we all have European values, which are uh, equality, human rights. But we are also, let's say, racist, because we have jokes about immigrants for, from former Yugoslavia. So, are we European or are we not? Should, should there be? Yeah. In your opinion, a European identity? Well, it's hard to say. Probably yes, but it is then going to be also a national identity. And I know that we have personal identity and common identity. So I think that from the personal identity then comes the identity of our own. I think that we have to to have uh, the first our personal identity and then the common identity. To me, you are talking about European identity. It's very <laughs> full of paradox and, and and it's very complex. But I think because human always needs to belong to some group and uh, it's very dangerous if someone don't feel that he or she belongs in some group they are in a dangerous position to themselves and, and to the groups I think so uh, because of this dialogue between different 
countries and different kind of and, uh, like two people to uh, dialogue between countries. It's uh, everything that uh, helps that is something to work for, and I, I think uh, we have some kind of European identity and. It looks very, very uh, complex to me, but it's important to build these kind of things because uh, we really need that. It would be nice to have like a whole world, like human race identity, because we the problems are now so big that we think like uh, global warming or something. But I think global warming uh, can be some point. In some point, the uh, uh, problem that, that will collect us together, I hope, because it will show us together in, a, in, in any case. But you said, so just the question that you said that it's contradictory and there are paradoxes in, in this European identity that you are thinking about. What do you mean? What kind of paradoxes? Can you? He has, he has said that human rights and, and uh, equality, but racism, like, in, you know, like, 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 racism. yeah, yeah, racism. But, but, but Leif has, has tell, tell, uh, speak about is that uh, there's different kind of values, like uh, layers like very, very uh, strong and big and <laughs> thick layers about values. But I think the dialogue might be the thing between complex and, and paradoxical uh, values. Well, the need to, be, to, to belong to some kind of uh, community is uh, a basic human need. It, you, you find it everywhere. Then when you go further uh, and uh, start to feel that your own group or your own church or your own locality or your own nation is in some ways superior to another group or other church or, or, or nation, then uh, you're talking about nationalism, which isn't the same thing as this basic belonging to, to a group. Now, <clears throat> I, I detect uh, a certain, when we, when we talk about creating a European identity, I detect uh, um, a hidden wish uh, on the part of, uh, let's say, the European Commission and uh, the staff that operates there to uh, create a new kind of European nationalism. Uh, in which uh, uh, the dreamed superstate, the federal superstate of Europe, is seen in a, in uh, in a superior light compared to the rest of the world. Uh, you see it in in many ways. Uh, Europe uh, is supposed to be delight of the nations. I mean, uh, it's supposed to be in the forefront of every good thing mankind has ever come upon. Uh, it isn't, of course, so. Uh, in, in combination with, with a wish from, uh, from some members of the Union to play a, an active military role in world affairs, this can become very dangerous. And if you, uh, once again, still combine this with a wish to close the borders to third parties, I mean the immigrants from the very poor nations, then we have uh, what was called um, during the 90s the Festum of Europa, the, the citadel Europe. Uh, and, and that's something that I, I really don't want to see. And if the wish to create and construct a European identity leads in this direction, then we're far off our goals. Why would it be so bad that we had a European superstate that would be prosperous and could uh, negotiate on 
equal terms with the United States and China? Well, it means that you have to eliminate the national democracies. You have to eliminate the national sovereignty and the peoples of Europe aren't ready for it. Then you have to push it down their throats. Is that what you want? But that does the national identities or cultural identities, regional identities, for instance, a Finnish or Catalonian or Scottish identity, is it contradictory to a European identity? Why, why should it be? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I don't think the, the question of identity is, is in contradiction with a, uh, another layer of uh, identity formation, for, for example, on, on a European level. But I do think that the question of national democracy and European democracy are in contradiction with each other. I don't think any form of democracy in Europe is possible without a very healthy national democracy and a certain amount of national sovereignty. I'm pressing my point here that in the United States they definitely have um, national identity. They are proud of their United States. Too proud. Even too proud. <laughs> uh, still they have uh, their state's own legislation and so on and so on. Uh, how is it possible in the United States? Why isn't it possible in, in, in Europe? Probably because of their history. Yes. Probably. I think it's all about the history and the roots. Also, if you look into the Croatia, they have much, much big national identity. But I don't know. Okay, they are the new member of European Union. So I think that if you ask them now, probably they feel very, very, very European. But we have to ask them in the future, let's say five years, how do they feel? And I think that, okay, in the Croatia there was war and etc. etc. And I think that they are not going to leave the national identity for the European identity. And that's history. Let's vote. Uh, can I? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, can I just say something about the United States? It's a very young country. It's been deliberately construed as a new formation. Uh, you have to remember that uh, whereas in, for example, if, if we look at the, the American institutions, if you look at, uh, at uh, the American Federal Reserve, for example, uh, it was created less than a hundred years ago. The Bank of England, on the other hand, uh, was uh, founded in 1676, uh, I think. I mean, there's a huge difference in the way the European nations, and now lately the European Union, has emerged compared to the formation of the United States. Let's vote. You all have a red and a blue black uh, piece of paper. Um, do you vote for or against a more federal European superstate, a prosperous... <laughs> okay, uh, well, I don't go there. Prosperous <laughs> like today. Like today. Or, uh, or if you are against, it's the red flag. If you are for more integration, uh, in the end, a federal European state is the blue one. So, Leif, your comments on this night of, of, of the world. Uh, well, uh, my, my main uh, objection to, to the creation of a, a federal deeply federal uh, European system is, is purely instrumental. I, I have absolutely no ideological or, or, or philosophical uh, uh, 
things against such the construction. I just don't believe it will function. And uh, I'm, I, I take an instrumental view of, of these uh, structural uh, changes in Europe. I, I, I see them as dangerous for national democracy and for European democracy. And I fear a strong backlash from, the, from uh, the European peoples if this is in some way pushed through without uh, considering uh, the different uh, national interests in this respect. But you saw, we saw an overwhelming yes. The people voted for more integration. Your comments? Probably it's good for me to skip to. <laughs> no, no, your own thoughts. Well, I think that integration is needed, but not to copy the story of the United States, because we don't have roots like the United States. I was reading about this federalism in Europe, and the, let's say the Slovenian academic said, okay, we tried the federalism and it ends. The story does not go because one country needs this, one country needs this. And they quickly forget about the, let's say, the same story or the same goals. So, okay, I am for federalism, but you need to have all the questions, all the goals, and the, let's say, the view and the point for the whole European Union. Not, let's say, we say this, you say this. But I think that I don't know if European Union is going to be federal. I think not. Yeah, it's a wish, but I think that this is not going to happen. Uh, there's a fallacy and a paradox here. The fallacy is that uh, we think that uh, more integration means the mutualization of interests in Europe. What we have seen so far is in fact that national interests have prevailed in a more integrated Europe. Don't for a second believe that Germany will give up its objections to more mutualization of, for example, the handling of common debt. That will not happen. They will push for their own interests to the bitter end. So, there is no convergence of na national interests in Europe, de facto. The paradox is that if you want to keep the euro going, you have to integrate more. You have to have a banking union. You have to have some sort of mutual uh, debt uh, responsibility in Europe, in the forms of euro bonds or, or in the form of interventions from the European Central Bank. You have to have that if you want to have a successful euro. So far, Germany uh, hasn't decided which way to go, but I'm sure that they will follow their national interests. And uh, when we have debates about, about, for example, the Finnish participation in, in different arrangements uh, concerning the bailouts of the crisis countries, uh, in the Finnish debate, even the parties in, in our government are trying to say that we do only what's good for Finnish interests. They never put the question as it should be, what's good for the European Union? And these are the most pro-Union parties in Finland. But they never put the question in this way. They always talk about Finnish interests. Okay, let's move on to another question about that is 
you have to talk about when you talk about European identity, and that is language. Uh, we are all trying to speak English here, and uh, I believe we have several other languages represented here in the audience too. How? What is what is the role of, of the, the different languages in, 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 in Europe? It, for the European identity, in, in your point of view, do you see? Uh, have you given this a thought? Mario. Well, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a writer, and, and this is quite a big issue to me, of course, this language, but I, um, I, I don't see it that so big problem in a way, this language thing, if, if what comes to identity because uh, being a human and being every, every, everything is like mostly more than is in language, I think. I can, uh, when I'm meeting a person that I don't have a common language, we, we can't speak, I still can uh, feel that we are the same. We have more, more uh, more things in common than than uh, differences, I think. But you know, I I started to think about this European <laughs> identity in this conversation, and, uh, and 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 I'm just thinking about this uh, being a human, this identity of being human, <laughs> this biggest like topic in in the you know identities, and I think. Uh, that's something, yeah, sorry, I'm not just like, I'm having big thoughts in my mind and I, I really can't speak about it, but, but one thing, I was, uh, when, I, when I was, a couple of years ago, I tried to uh, figure it out, is there some big narrative or story uh, found, like European, a story of Europe, like European narrative, what it might be, and, and, it was a mess that, you know, just as you said in the beginning, it's full of different, I, I got just a uh, like massive painting and I tried to figure it out where, what comes there and then goes there and, and, and what, what, what has happened and is there some one line that goes with that and that and but one thing that proves that I feel I'm European was that I was feeling a big shame when I was watching that painting. And it can all, all also be this feeling because uh, I'm a human. And, uh, and, and I, was, I was feeling a big, big massive guiltiness also. I was so guilty. I was so guilty and shame also. Of course other emotions. But, but you can't uh, feel shame or guilty if, if you don't think, if you think that they have nothing to do with you, if you're just like outsider of this. And I, I was feeling that, you know, I'm part of this picture and this very, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, um, yeah, I'm part of this story that is no story, not in, not in a modern way. Yeah, I was part of that painting, and that those feelings just proved it, it to me. So, I, I know I'm simplifying a little bit now, but, but what did you come, what, how, how do you conclude? You, 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 did, you, did you find something that is very European in yourself, or did you? Even if it was a mess. Yes, I found because uh, I was feeling those negative emotions because of European history, and and if I if I'm feeling that I, I don't have I have nothing to do with this, I can't feel these kind of emotions, and those emotions proved <laughs> that I'm, I I think myself as a European and as a human being, uh, of course. 
But um, yeah, I don't know. But but I really started to think about this guilty and shame, and I I, I think they are in a negative light, but I think they are very very important feelings to to you human. Uh, there was before Simon Elo said that he he feels very proud to be Finn and, and brother, and we should be proud and and. Of course, in a way, but still, I'm, I'm just like looking. It's, it's like human to to be guilty and shame, and they're like like uh, lights that say that okay, this really didn't go well enough. This history <laughs> or something, because uh, the history started to look to me as a manage risk management or or something that we don't really have. Nobody really has doesn't think the big picture. Everybody else is like uh, full of greed and uh, trying to get as much as possible to themselves. And this is like a history of a human being. And that made me, <coughs> uh, of course, there's other things too, but this started to like uh, come up to me. It would be interesting to hear some voices from the audience on this subject. Uh, first, I, I would like to ask you a, a very simple question. And I, I don't, uh, you, 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 you should answer it uh, with a yes or no, if possible. The, the, the question is, do you see yourself in any situation to answer, yes, I, I'm a European, in, in a discussion. What kind of situation? <laughs> I mean, if this is a very practical question. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, you ask me, yeah. when do I feel European? Yeah, yeah. Is, is there a situation when you hear yourself say, yeah, I, I'm from Europe? Of course, yes, of course, because I have a values I I am questioning about diversity, equality, I am fighting for that, so I think that I am European. They could say yes, of course, every second, every minute, if we look on that side. But, but also I have some other personal identity. Leif, is there any situation? Well, I've written about it, actually, you are in, in my latest book, uh, as a fact. Uh, I'd spent about um, four months in Latin America, in the Caribbean, and so on. And, uh, uh, I was uh, I was tired of uh, the sauce, and the heat, and <laughs> the mess, <laughs> and, and everything. And I, when I when I boarded the plane in New York and flew flew to Amsterdam, uh, I I let a deep sigh and <laughs> thought that at last I'm going back to the cool, tranquil, logical, uh, industrious Europe where everything functions. And when I came to Europe, the, the, the Soviet debt crisis had just begun. It was a mess. There was nothing of this classical tranquility that I uh, that I uh, combined with Europe uh, left actually at that point. But of course, I'm European when I'm outside Europe. I, I feel it acutely. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I, I don't feel in any 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 deep feelings. About, I I don't consider myself myself a European. I've been out of Europe a lot, and so I I, I can. Uh, relate to, to other cultures uh, as well. And I wouldn't say that, uh, for example, the Muslim culture for me is, is very close to me. And uh, I, I can't say that I, I'm, I'm a European in that sense. Um, but of course my education is European, my life as it has developed is has been spent mostly in Europe, and uh, it's inevitable that you become some sort of European. 
but I'm uh, well. I, I'd, I'd like to quote a Latin proverb: "Ubi bene, ibi patria." Where you, where it's good for you, yes, your father. And Maria, in what situation do you say yes? I'm European. In, in any kind of situation, it's not so. It's it's not like a big secret or something. But you know. Um, of course I am, but first of all I'm a human, and that and, and being European doesn't mean that uh, I'm different than some uh, Moroccan person or, or wherever. It's just like it's just my identity. Identity. That's you know one part of it. That's one part of my identity that uh, has built me, like logical sometimes, <laughs> and or uh, yeah. But it's, it's just, I think it's a fact. And if there's no big emotions in that, to me also, that it's just, it's how it is. Any questions from the audience to, to, to the panel? Or any thoughts about European identity that you want to share? I was hearing yes, years in Peru. Uh, South America, and then I said, where are you coming from? I said, I come between Volvo and Moscow. <laughs> Volvo are the uh, lorries what the Swedes are producing, and uh, Moscow, everybody knows where is that in the world. Uh, other thing is that when we had these wars in Europe, Yugoslavia, and Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, uh, most Peruvians said, uh, you are from Europe, they are the same sheep as America. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, may I use that between Volvo and Moscow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I have the microphone, I may as well <laughs> ask a question. Uh, well, uh, what Maria said brought to my mind a book that I recently read. It was uh, written by a, a French intellectual called uh, Pascal Bruckner. And in that book he talks about exactly about the guilty conscience that you, Europe, Europeans feel about our sort of uh, dark past. Uh, and what Bruckner is trying to say in that book, like one of his main theses, is that uh, that we are caught in a trap of, of sort of questioning ourselves and, and constantly apologizing for our past, and we are not uh, sort of able to defend our our core values anymore, and and. Um, he makes a comparison between United States and Europe and, and says that whereas uh, uh, United States is saying I want, Europe is constantly asking who am I? <laughs> and and I, I, I really can relate to this and, and even, even uh, share his thought that even, even though we have dark past, we have committed crimes, but then again, we were also the first continent to end slavery, and we have also like really good things in our in our history that we should be able to defend, even though we have to also keep in mind the dark uh, dark uh, memories of our history. Mm -hmm. So that, that's true, and I you know I don't feel that our uh, I'm not apologizing in a way, but I think those kind of uh, emotions are, are, are in a too black light because you know they are very important signals to a person that that is this good or bad. And and, and think about this vision of Europe, or, or like uh, of course we have to think that what 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 is uh, what is uh, important enough to take with and how to uh, avoid taking these kind of things with that we don't want to have. And have. But of, of course this, this, these are very personal personal things. Every, every single European has different kind of uh, 
answer to that question. I, I read the book by, by Brooklyn, La Tyranny de la Penitence. I think he's profoundly wrong. Uh, he, he puts uh, a shine on, on Europe that Europe doesn't deserve. Uh, he says that we've learned from our mistakes. Well, we haven't. What does France do in Africa right now? It's nothing but neo-colonialism. What does Britain strive to do in the world? Arranging other people's affairs. I mean, we haven't these humanitarian interventions that uh, they lust for in Great Britain and France. What is it other than pure, naked, neo-colonials? We haven't learned. Have we learned anything? No. <laughs> no. Not that much. We can no. behave maybe more. But, uh, are, are we not going to learn? Uh, I, think, I think the learning starts when, when you really think about uh, what has gone wrong. And, and you know, I, would, I, I love to be in the gang that thinks that who am I more than in a gang that says that I want, you know. Well, the Americans certainly want. They're like small children sucking on their mothers. That they they think that the whole world is a giant breast. They think what they want. <laughs> so, so basically, you're saying that there hasn't been any progress in the in the. <laughs> so there hasn't been any progress in in our societies in the past decades at all. Like, I mean, after. For example, Second World War. Look at what we did, what Europe did in Iraq. What France is doing in Africa right now. What Belgium and France have done in, in Africa. What have we learned? Nothing. What are we doing in Afghanistan? Maybe we really should construct an European identity that is uh, something better in that, in that case, if you are right. Maybe that is the, the, the main thing to do. Yes? Yeah, just only my objection about uh, what are we doing there? We are talking with uh, national terms now. France is doing that, Great Britain is doing that, Belgium is doing that, and the European Union is uh, quite out what is not doing. When we are talking about international relations and about the European Union, you're always complaining that, oh, the European Union is not doing anything. It is weak and uh, not able to negotiate with uh, the big problems and the hard security problems. But uh, I was thinking myself about what I could reduce my many identities, actually, uh, as the European. And I was thinking about the European Union's motto. Nobody has actually mentioned it. It's uh, united in diversity. And that is, I think, the vision that we have lost in the last years. That is actually try to be together, maintaining our own diversities. And this was my comment. Well, when it comes to EU, EU foreign policies, the crimes that, that have been committed are legion. I mean, the Balkans, the Middle East, Africa, and so on. Uh, the fact that uh, some countries stayed out of some operations doesn't mean that the EU goes scot-free. Do you buy that? Yeah, but sin of inaction, I would call it, <laughs> in that sense. But then again, when, when, when you spoke about Concordia in Diversitas, uh, Concordia in, in diversity, unity in diversity, uh, I mean, that's to take the, the European uh, integration up to a symbolic level where it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, uh, uh, when, when it comes to the hard grind that the Commission 
goes through every week, every month, every year. These words don't mean anything. They're out to to level the playing field for 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 uh, the strong actors in the market, and that's it. And the, I mean unity, yes, and centralization, yes, but diversity, no. Did you have a comment on that? <laughs> you want to comment? It was, it was your point, so I mean... Yes, I know. But here we are talking again about politics, in that sense, and... Well, the European Union is it about is politics. And a political uh, body, that is true. But uh, it has a history as well, and we are going into the characteristics of it. So what is made for member states, national states, national interests, and so on. But there are ideals as well, and symbols are important, in my opinion. And uh, the vision that is missing as well. Uh, all the steps from the communities up to the Union had a course. And there are different points that... Uh, it's a huge matter if we go with that. And um, I see how the Union is now, and I see the many weak points. I see the hard politics, Machiavellianism, you can call it, but still it's very ideal. Uh, the, the European dream, let's call it like that, as it was in another book, like concepts of solidarity and welfare state and dignified life for everybody, these are what the many values that have been called so far, and these are what has the are what are at the essence of the European Union, then how they are performed, that's another thing. Like, it's the same tension that you can find in a country constitution and then how these rights are applied in every single state. They're the very same thing, I see the same tension in that sense. Tony, uh, point. Yes. it's good to have the goal inside. The vision. Yes, well, it can become a totalitarian vision also, as you well know. And, of course, symbols are important. Like language is important for communication and for lighting. Interesting that uh, we now uh, are about to conclude this discussion and coming to the very point. I'm very glad that you, you, you said what you said, because uh, if I understand you right, correct me if I'm wrong, you are saying that um, yes, uh, an European identity should be constructed and it should be constructed uh, by who? Thinking about the, just a second later, thinking about the ideals and the positive things that can be done. Lev, you are very pessimistic about it. So, in, in my mind, we are about to conclude that, yes, an identity should be constructed, but in a, in a certain way, not a totalitarian, but uh, respecting the de local democracies, as well as un being united. How, I don't know yet. We have one more comment here. Yeah, again, as a... Uh just an active citizen, I would like to say that it was interesting to see that Stefano kind of is for vision and diversity and life is kind of uh, skeptical about it. And there was one thing that I find that I wrote uh, in my notes in each of these three debates that have been heard so far. And it is that uh, the fact that the idea that uh, European identity is so somehow trying to replace other levels of uh, our identity and I, I, I have never believed that and I, I will not believe it uh, now but it's a, it's a thing that is very difficult to get into people's heads that you there's in Finland there's this uh, juxtaposition between Europe and something else but I've seen that in our movement uh, there are many people who feel themselves European because 
they are from different nationalities. Their parents come from several countries or, 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 or they can build their Europeanism out of elements because all of their building blocks have not been given from a single country only. And this means that I believe that in a human, as a human being, I have different voices with, within me. I have different identities and these can be in conflict. Even they, they can be paradoxical. And the like uh, juxtaposition of uh, uh, these, uh, these identities that this against that and you have to choose which one you want is, I believe it's unnecessary, it's futile. They do exist, but instead we have to see that uh, we can have diversity in, in it. Um, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, who is not a European, wrote in one instance that... <laughs> yes, but, uh, but uh, wrote in another, uh, you see, he is for diversity here. Uh, he wrote that if we cannot now end our differences, let us make the world safe for diversity. And I believe that this is the key of becoming European. We have to learn to cope with the different levels of identity and the paradoxical different voices within us as individuals. And through that we can construct the European identity and uh, be as Europeans united in diversity. One more comment from the audience. Um, so I heard that uh, you mentioned that the European identity should be constructed. And I, I don't think it should be constructed, but I think it will result. It will eventually materialize more and more. And uh, without saying if this is bad or good, but uh, it is clear to me at least that the nation state is uh, becoming more and more redundant, is, is being overcome as a... As a as an entity, because simply because the problems are not national anymore, they are much wider. I and mean, youth unemployment is not a problem just of Spain, for example, but this is just one tiny example in the or climate change and etc. etc. So um, uh, the nation state is for me is gradually being overcome now and. Uh, I don't think we should take this as the end of the world or I, I, I'm not able to say if this is good or bad. I don't think the nation state is the culmination of human development. And uh, on the other side, um, uh, especially us Europeans cannot uh, say this because um, throughout our history we have lived uh, for very long periods actually uh, under empires where European states were just regions and we went through the nation states and now we are going through this period of uh, more integration and losing of the national sovereignty. Uh, so it's just another period. The difference now is that uh, unlike in the case of empires, we have some expectations for uh, democracy that we have managed to build at our national level and uh, this is the new challenge. How to keep this process the most democratic possible, but for me it's, it's clear, it's irreversible. I'm not defending it as positive or negative, but it is happening. So the real challenge is how to keep it democratic. Um, and, um, but if you wish, I, I would like to think of, to make a parallelism with the same challenge of keeping demo, uh, a democratic organization of power even within the state. Different states today have different uh, uh, separation of powers and the different decentralization levels. And uh, for some states which have very high decentralization, the organization and centralization of power in another European one is uh, unacceptable, for example. But uh, so this is the challenge, and I would very much like uh, uh, that we think in this in these terms. Even at national level, we have a struggle of democracy: how many powers should be handled at local level, and uh, what should be handled at. Uh, um, at the central level, and uh, I just see it as a bigger transfer of, uh, of example, but uh, it's irreversible for me. So, you, in your point of view, Europe is under construction? Yes. <laughs> yes. You might have a point, yes, uh, but I would like to point out that uh, nothing in history is irreversible. Okay. I mean, uh, we've seen empires come and go. And we're going to see the European come and go also. It might take a while. But as I said, you might be right. There might be in the long term uh, a development where uh, you see a 
very far-reaching integration of European uh, nation states into an enhanced European Union. But it is possible. I, I won't deny that. But uh, I, I really can't imagine how it's going to be done. I mean, uh, how do you overcome in that case uh, the resistance from uh, uh, the European nations and the people? They aren't ready for it. The gentleman. Yeah. Uh, the English name for this book is The True History of the Bilderberg Group. It tells 15, uh, 500 pages of the European American history together. So we can say that uh, the United States of North Atlantic is true, and this group Bilderberg has worked already 60 years for a common interest for Europe and uh, United States. And uh, it's, it's very possible that uh, the com European community was founded for to have a good investment climates in Europe after the Second World War. And uh, the Marshall help was, it was easy to invest, make investments for Americans today. And that means that in the future we have the United States of North Atlantic, which is already military, but not economical until today. Thank you. There is uh, more comments. Yes, I have more comment. Um, when we came here before this event started today, there was this lady who is working here at Kaiser, who is um, African heritage. And she has been living here in Finland for some years. And she was really interested in our uh, organization and the movement. Um, but she asked one question that is kind of stuck to my head throughout this whole conversation we've had today. And that is, um, well, I'm really interested in this movement, but am I European enough? And to me, that was kind of an indication. We've been discussing if there is a European identity. And if she can feel it, why can't we Europeans feel it, kind of? To me, that was like a clear indication that there is some kind of European identity. But this is just a notion in the end. <laughs> Thank you, very, very good. Uh, if I may co conclude, but I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Nina, to you, the European identity, your European identity is one of your identities and you don't see any problem with that. Mario, to you it's first and foremost the, the, the human identity that is your identity. And the European identity is, is not as significant, not as important as, as that. No way, but it's a fact that I'm a European woman. And Leif? Yeah, I think that you want to warn us about uh, certain elite that wants to impose and uh, force on up, upon us a certain European identity that, that is not necessarily the one we want. Yes. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to, to all the good comments. Thank you.